So we're actually back here at my house. I wanted to take a minute to stop and show you kind of something I do here back at my home, just a little backyard food plot. Uh, we plant it in a spring and fall planting for deer every year. I've been in the house six years, so this will be the seventh year we do this. Um, this year, I'm gonna do something a little bit different and I wanted to take you all through it. What we've typically done is come in here with a turn plow and you can see it's about a half acre and we've turn plowed that whole half acre, came back across it with a disc, then seeded everything, dissed everything back under. So more of a traditional planting, just like we did for the sunflowers, if you're following the dove farming series. So this is actually wheat and oats and cereal rye grain that are in this half acre plot left over from the fall planting. And this time, instead of mowing it and turning it under, I've let it come up to about three foot tall. I've let it go to seed. And right before the seed hardened, it was still a little bit moist. I came in here and I burned all of this down with glyphosate. Uh, this was about two weeks ago I sprayed it and you can tell it's dead as a doornail. And what's happened is it's leaving a really nice thatch on the ground. You can see all the oats in there. You can see some of the rye grain and it's got a lot of thatch on the ground. And the idea is instead of coming in here this year and turning it and disking it, I'm going to try a no-till uh, the buffalo system type method where I'm going to come in here and overseed it really heavy, uh, then come back in here with the tractor and really just crimp all this uh, detritus on top of the seed and, and it'll provide kind of a mulch cover. So what I don't have is a crimper or a cultipacker. So I'm thinking I'm either going to use the tractor to just make a bunch of passes through it and knock it down or I might use the bush hog and actually lay it down with the bush hog. Might cut it with the bush hog, not sure yet. But uh, right now, everything's been burned down. Um, probably gonna seed it in the next week or so. That just with the tractor going through here spraying, it laid a lot of this vegetation down into a nice, even mat. So I'm thinking if you can get seed in here, I mean, it's moist, really moist in there in that decomposed thatch, and you've got that mulch layer on top, I'm thinking I might can just seed it real heavy and then come back in here with the tractor and just gently go over the whole thing and knock it down. I want to show you what is actually out here. This is the oats and the cereal rye, rye grain. So that's predominantly what this food plot was. There were winter peas in it, uh, but the winter peas are long gone. They've long since been eaten by the deer. And the deer actually stopped eating this food plot about January, definitely February. They don't touch it in March and springtime it really makes a run and comes on up to about three feet tall and that's when we come in here and spray it all and burn it all down and get ready for the spring planting but like i said instead of turn plowing it under we're going to come in here and overseed it heavy and see if we can just get a no-till type application and utilize all this good thatch that's on the ground to provide a mulch cover i'm really excited to see how it works small plot i don't have a whole lot to lose uh, so we'll just see if it works. If it works, that's great. If not, no big deal. Um, but with much covers in here, I definitely want to give it a try. So regarding the soil type out here, kind of a sidebar that this is all clay and rocky soil. Uh, very, very high clay. All the top soil has kind of gotten washed off into this bottom down here. Uh, there's some top soil in here, but not much. But this whole area... It's got a lot of rock. Now the rock is not the worst thing in the world as it does help stabilize the soil. Um, but it's important to note that when this seed gets broadcasted through here, it's not gonna be laying on some organic high uh, seed bed. It's gonna be laying on clay. And like I said, there's a little bit of, little bit of brown in there. So there's some more, a little bit of organic content, but for the most part, it is rock and clay. So I'm probably gonna have to do this after a rainfall to get that optimal seed soil contact uh, before, when I come in here to seed this. So we'll see, not the best soil conditions, but it's what we're working with. To give you kind of a comparison, these are the oats that did not get oversprayed and you can see how green they still are. A um, lot of moisture in there still. It has not hardened up at all yet. So we definitely wanna get this sprayed out and done before the oats hardened. Um, I think there was a little bit of cereal rye in here somewhere, just to show you what it looks like when it's green. That's him right there. So that's the cereal rye. Um, same thing, it's, it's really moist. It's not fully developed seed, uh, but this is what it looked like green before we came in here and sprayed it. So we wanna catch that sweet window before everything hardens up. 
So that's kind of what we're working with out here. Uh, this is May 6th, so about a week. Maybe we'll come in here and go ahead and do the seating, do another quick video when we do the seating, tell you what we're putting out, why we're putting out, what the rates are, and just take a look at how effective it is to actually broadcast into this thatch. And then we'll see from there what kind of germination we can get. So. May 10th, I was gonna wait about another week to do this, but it's been raining a little bit and it's calling for more rain coming up soon. So I wanna go ahead and take advantage of all the soil moisture and get these cow peas put in the ground. So I just wanna show you what we're doing today. We're seeding, fertilizing, getting cow peas put in the ground, using all this burned down thatch to go with a no-till type installation of these cow peas. Uh, kind of like a buffalo system kind of thing, but we don't have a crimper or a cult packer So we're just gonna get them all spread out in here and then knock all the thatch down on top of the peas. So let's take a look at this rig, look up what we're putting out. I'm also gonna inoculate these peas and show you what that process looks like. Let's do it. The vacation I've done to the sprayer is I actually bolted a piece of PVC on here to extend it back. So when I'm riding, I can open and close that hopper or the uh the opening rather so that way i can control how much seed is coming out or fertilizer is coming out and i can just make slight adjustments on this guy as he's opening that plate on the bottom um so here's what we've got good old iron clay cow peas deer love them uh they're graze tolerant they can be nipped off and they can regrow whereas a soybean once it gets cut it's done whereas the cow peas are much more tolerant so we're not going to blend it this year i'm just going straight cow peas uh, since I'm doing the no-till, I don't know if it's going to work great. Um, so I don't want to waste a bunch of money on vetch and Alice Clover and all the expensive seeds. So, so what we're going to need to do next is inoculate these peas. So legumes require bacteria in the soil to fixate nitrogen uh, for them to grow. And so to help expedite that nitrogen fixation process, you use a inoculant. And this is specific for peas, vetch, uh, pretty much any legumes. It would work for soybeans as well. So this is an inoculant. It's just a bacteria that we're going to coat on this seed. And that's going to make it much more readily pull nitrogen out of the air and pump it into the soil and make the plant much more healthy. So let me show you how I inoculate these peas. I've, got, I've just got a regular spray bottle. And I've mixed in some warm sugar water, make it warm so it dissolves the sugar. And we're actually just going to lightly mist these peas just to make them a little bit wet and sticky. So I wet them a little bit and we'll stir them around, spread that moisture around. And we're gonna wet them again. And you just want a little bit of a glaze on there so that they're sticky, but not gonna actually clump together. You don't want the peas to clump together because they're not gonna fall through that hopper. So we just want a little bit of a light moisture coat on there. I think I need just a little bit more. I'm looking for that shine on there. You can see a little bit of a shine. Just looking for that shine. And what this sugar water is doing is going to allow that bacteria inoculant to stick to these peas. If it was just turned into a dust, it may scatter off of it when it's getting spread. So just make it nice and wet, nice and sticky. That way it'll take those inoculant little bacteria particles and it's going to stick right to it. When I add that inoculant, what you're gonna see is speckled eggs. It's gonna look like speckled eggs rather on these cow peas, and that's what you want. You wanna know that bacteria is on there. All right, just got a nitrile glove on. And just coming in here, it's gonna work, work and work all that bacteria down into that cow pea, making a nice mixture that's nice and even seeds down in there deep so I want to make sure everything gets good and coated and you can see everything discolored pretty quickly telling me that the inoculant is sticking to the seed and if you look see what I was talking about speckled eggs all that inoculant because of that sugar water is stuck to the cow pea and that allows that bacteria to be very readily accessible after that pea germinates so we're going to mix it up just a little bit more and we're going to go spread this first batch
right, so we got the first half of that bag put out, and we just got the other half put in here, got everything inoculated. All that inoculant all over those cowpeas looking like speckled eggs. Um, so everything is really well inoculated. It's still just a little bit moist. I'm letting the sun dry them out just a second so they fall through that hopper a little better. Um, but this is looking good, man. I'm kind of excited. There's a lot of thatch in here that is going to act like a lot of good mulch cover. So I got all the cow peas put out. We're going to put out some fertilizer now. It's going to put out, I've got four bags of the 51010. Uh, again, legumes don't need a lot of nitrogen. That bacteria inoculant you added in there has actually helped provide the available nitrogen for those cow peas. So we're just going to go with the 51010. I've only got 200 pounds. This got fertilized in the fall. Uh, granted, a lot of that probably got soaked up, but I'm just not putting a lot of money into this plot this year. So 200 pounds, 510, 10, 50 pounds of cow peas, bag of inoculant, no till. We'll see how it works. Got it all out, 50 pounds of seed, uh, 200 pounds of fertilizer. Um, really excited to see how this works because that was a lot less work than mowing it, turn plowing it, disking it, seeding it, disking it. So if this works, this is gonna be my go-to for sure here at the house. It's just, it's so much easier. So I wanted to take a look at a couple spots out here just to see, is the seed laying on the ground? Did it make it through the thatch? Is the soil moisture still pretty good in there? Is the fertilizer down in there making it through the thatch? and uh, just see what I can maybe expect um, based on the seed placement. Uh, we'll look at one small area as an example and just see if we can extrapolate that across the whole field to see if it's gonna work or not. So let's take a look at a spot real quick. All right, I'm just gonna pick a spot here at random again and just look. So we've got all the oat thatch. You can see the oat seeds are really drying out. So we've got all the oat thatch and some old detritus down in here. And I can already see fertilizer all in here. And lo and behold, way down in here, there's a cowpea, two of them side by side. Made it through all the thatch, fertilizer sitting all around it, sitting right on top of very moist soil right there. So all indicators are, if that applied to this whole half acre, we're going to be in good shape. A lot of moisture in there, a lot of thatch on top of it, uh, fertilizer and seed all made it down through this really heavy cover. So for this project, I'm using our first John Deere that our family had. This is a 2001 model John Deere 4200. I think it's actually a 25 horsepower to the PTO. They changed the numbering system now. The 4000 series now are 40 horsepower, whereas this 4200 is, I think it's 25 for the PTO. But dad bought this one originally, sold it to me about seven years ago. It's actually only got 1,100 hours on it, I believe. But this thing has gone down many of deer trail bush hogging and turned many of acres of field. So it's been a great tractor for us. No major repairs. I uh, picked up a new bush hog a couple of years ago from a buddy. Um, but I use it here at my home place. We've got four acres out here. And it is just the perfect tractor for managing an 800 foot long gravel driveway. I've got a perimeter path around the whole property and then for managing this half acre food plot. So I love this little tractor, it's hydrostatic. Uh, all the safeties are bypassed so I can hop on, hop off, uh, do quick things, maneuver around. And it's just been a great little tractor. I really love it. All right, 
right, so we've got half of it bush hogged out here and looking at it, the thatch doesn't seem that heavy to me. If it was a real heavy green stand of something, then yeah, I would see that being pretty heavy. But with this being so dead, it just doesn't look that heavy to me. I don't think the seed's gonna have a problem at all coming up through this. So let's take a look at it real quick. I think I'm gonna go ahead and bush hog the whole thing. It'll look neater, it'll look nicer, the tick factor as well. Uh, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and bush hog all this. Because it looks like, you know, pretty heavy thatch. But then you move just a little bit and you can get in here and you can see, you know, right, right there is a pea. So the thatch is just not that heavy. If it was a real heavy green stand of, you know, late season cowpeas, late season soybeans, I could see that being a problem. But with what I've got here, I think I'm gonna go ahead and bush hog that remaining half, go ahead and make it all look uniform, pretty, and just see what happens with the cowpeas. Because as you get down the hill here, it actually gets a little bit more sparse under here. So you can already see all the ground. So if I were just to lay that over, that's not gonna be much mulch cover. So I'm gonna go ahead and bush hog the remaining half of this field and uh, we'll see what happens. Got it all mowed. And if there's any doubt if herbicide works, that's it right there. And then we'll follow this throughout the spring and summer and just see what kind of production we get. Weatherman didn't lie today. So I was taking that video about an hour ago and it is absolutely pouring right now. So hopefully this rain knocks the seed and the fertilizer all the way down through that uh, thatch bolt layer. And uh, tomorrow when the sun comes out, everything just starts to warm up. Hopefully we have germination in a few days. So this is pretty cool. Rain was right on time. All right, coming out here on June 5th for a update video. I haven't updated since the initial planting and had a good rain that afternoon. So we're out here just taking a look at what came up, what kind of germination did we get. First thing you'll kind of see back there is there's some green, you know, here and there in the rows, but still a lot of just heavy brown detritus from that mow down, the burn down, the wheat and oats and the things that were in here. Uh, so let's take a look at this real quick, see what we got. My initial impression watching all this is it didn't not work. Uh, it just didn't really come into great fruition. So a lot of plants coming up in here. The germination you're seeing are kind of in these linear rows, almost maybe where the tractor was passing through, patting it down, getting some seed to soil contact. But there is certainly right many cowpeas in here. area coming up here is a pretty healthy stand of it. There's also some grass coming in. Uh, this one got no pre-emergent properties put down, so where that cover, detritus cover, is a little bit lighter, that grass is starting to pop up in there. But you know, there's right many cow peas in here. So it, it worked. The spacing's decent. I would like to see it a little bit more crowded, I think. Um, but it's, it's not bad, to be honest. It's not bad. It, it didn't not work, like I said. It's just there's very concerted areas where there's just no plants whatsoever. But the spacing really isn't terrible. I think what I might would do next time is bump up my seeding rate. Like I said, you can see a little bit of green here, a little bit of green here. It's very linear. It's almost like wherever the tractor passed over it, it matted that seed into the soil a little bit. What I may do next time is up my seeding rate. Um, maybe you buy 50% just to account for the lack of maturity. And also there's a bunch of doves out here, a bunch of squirrels, rabbits, uh, crows are even in here. So there's a bunch of predation on the seed. I do know that. So I may up my seeding rate next year, but I've definitely got growth in here. It definitely germinated. It could be a little thicker, but um, it also could just be a little early. There still could be a lot more smaller plants coming on. But this is June 5th, June 6th. Uh, we'll probably check in 
a month from now. I've just got a big doe that comes out every evening, almost every evening, every morning, grazing it pretty hard. Um, and at nighttime, I'm sure she's out here too. She loves the white clover that's up the hill. So she eats the clover, then she comes over here, eats some cow peas. So assuming it doesn't get grazed down, I'll check in in about a month. So since my last video, uh, when we initially planted it, I kind of called an audible and decided to put the turn plow on the tractor and tear up a chunk of this food plot to put in some sweet corn, some sunflowers, and some watermelon, just for fun, just to have something out here growing. We can maybe can come out here and pick. So the area that I'm about to show you was turn plowed. No disc, no tilling, none of that, just turn plowed. And what's interesting is it's doing really well as far as the cow peas go for have just having the turn plow turned over on top of it. You know, that's a lot of soil that's covering a lot of that seed, but it's like the seed found its way up through and maybe also just the areas that had a light coating really like that soil sitting on top of it. So let's take a look at it. So this area where all the dirt is up to about right there, I ran through here with the turn plow one time and then came back in here and put some sweet corn in these random kind of rows, if you will. And everything else you see green out there are cow peas that came up through the turn plow, where the turn plow came through and rolled dirt on top of it. And it's coming up in the hill that was created. It's coming up in the valleys, you know, where the, the actual cut was and turn was made. Um, really interesting that we got fantastic germination from turn plowing over top of the already seeded cow peas. Not a traditional method, certainly, but uh, it kind of worked out here. Um, I think I am gonna have a major crowding problem when all that corn comes up. There's some random watermelons over there, some sunflowers back here. So I may have a crowding problem, but really I'm not too worried about it. I'm just gonna let it all go and do its thing. But these cow peas are significantly larger over here and that is because during about a two week drought, I was irrigating. So everything over here has had a lot more water than what's in the natural kind of no-till area. That's why you're seeing that growth so much taller. All right, so that's it for today, um, June 5th. We'll come back in here and check in, like I said, about a month from now, see where we're at. If I notice some really heavy grazing pressure, uh, I may come back out here to do one more growth stage check-in uh, before it all gets eaten down because when the deer seem to find this, they seem to knock it out pretty quick, so. First thing you're gonna notice behind me from when we're out here in June is, that is a carpet of grass. There are some cow peas down underneath the under canopy, but for all intents and purposes, that is a 100% grass covering that field back there. So what you're seeing here is the results mainly of a crop that did not get out of the ground very quickly. It did not grow very quickly and it had a lot of competition with all the grasses and there's a little bit of foxtail grasses, uh, some dog fennel, but for the most part, that's all grass. We're gonna flip the camera around and you're gonna see a major difference in the no-till versus the area that did get turn plowed over and got some dirt put on top of it and then I actually came back in here and sprayed some pre-emergent, grass pre-emergent, on top of these cow peas, and you're about to see the difference. Man, what a difference. <laughs> Zero grass and 100% cow peas that are very tall, very happy, and they are getting grazed like crazy. The tops of all these cow peas, every single one of them is getting eaten off. But, this area was the area that we tilled over, back over top, or actually turn plowed back over top. And then I sprayed metalaclor. Um, s metalaclor is the active ingredient. It's a grass pre-emergent, and it worked fantastic. There's not a stitch of grass in here. The only thing that came up is the dog fennel. About halfway down, you see the dog fennel. Um, but as far as results versus what we were doing out here, the goal was to do a no-till and just see, can you get a good stand of cow peas in a no-till? And the answer here was no. <laughs> we did not get a good stand of cow peas. The grass came in here way too heavy and uh, just did not work out like we had hoped it would. Um, there were some early onset cow peas, but everything got either kind of eaten to where it stunted it enough and that grass just jumped up and outran it. 
Now, I don't know that just the tilling and conventional method would not have worked better or worse, but I think the pre-emergent is really showing its powers right here because there's not a stitch of grass in here. So if you're going to do a backyard food plot, the no-till is inviting because it is a lot easier, but there's nothing that's going to be conventional disking and putting soil on top of those cow peas and then coming in here and spraying a pre-emergent. This is no-brainer. 100% better than everything else out here. I think another big factor of why my success was not very good here was the type of dirt. It is really highly compacted, a very rocky clay soil, and I think that really affected that seed's ability to germinate and get down there deep into it and to be happy. I also don't have a very high organic layer in here, and I think that seed would have been a lot happier if it had a nice two, three inch organic layer sitting on top. So if I did this same thing for year after year after year, I could probably get to a point where it would work a lot better. But for now, I'm just gonna come in here every year and burn it down, disc it and conventionally plant it because the results of putting a little bit of soil over that seed are glaringly better. So learned a lot on this one. It was kind of a journey. This is all strung out over the course of months here, uh, compiled here in just a one video. But I didn't want to drag out a series that were going to yield not very good results. And for me, the verdict is clear. Put dirt on top of the seed and spray your pre-emergent, and you're going to have much, much better results out of these cow peas. And it's really impressive how much grazing pressure these guys are taking. I mean, that has been eaten head to toe. Every single one of those plants has been eaten very aggressively, and it just keeps jumping up and keeps on growing. So this is pretty cool to see a side-by-side -side comparison. You can see the grass line where the herbicide stopped. You can see the, the line down there. I mean, it could not be more obvious. During this process, I had a camera set up, a trail camera set up on the tree down there, watching up this lane. I did tweak it a little bit throughout the video, but uh, I'm gonna end this video with a montage of progressionary shots, or progression shots rather, just from the time we planted, you know, not long after germination, marching right up until maybe even today, I think the camera's still rolling. And just so you can see kind of how they filled in and how the deer reacted to it and how it got grazed back down. Uh, so we're gonna end the video with that just so you can see a time lapse from start to finish. And that's gonna wrap this one up. So kind of cool, something fun, didn't put a whole lot of time and effort into it. Learned a little bit this year. No-till was certainly inviting here because just it's a lot easier. But as far as results, the no-brainer. Those cow peas wanted a little bit of dirt over them, and they certainly wanted a pre-emergent to help compete with all the grasses. And uh, thanks for watching this video, and we'll catch you on the next one. Hey, don't eat my watermelon.